We are given matrix A is diagonalizable, and we're asked to find matrix A to the power of 33. We're told to enter the elements as expressions and not use scientific notation. We'll begin by diagonalizing matrix A by writing matrix A in the form of matrix P times matrix D times the inverse of matrix P. Once we have matrix A in this form, we can determine matrix A to the power of 33 by determining matrix P times matrix D raised to the power of 33 times the inverse of matrix P. To start to diagonalize matrix A, we need to find the eigenvalues of matrix A. We do this by solving the equation, the determinant of the difference of matrix A and the product of lambda and the identity matrix equals zero, which I've already set up below. Notice the result of matrix A minus lambda times the two by two identity matrix has entries four minus lambda, one, negative two, one minus lambda. Next, we find the determinant, set it equal to zero and solve. The determinant is equal to the product of four minus lambda and one minus lambda minus the product of one and negative two. Multiplying and simplifying, we have the characteristic equation lambda squared minus five lambda plus six equals zero, which is factorable, giving us lambda sub one equals two, lambda sub two equals three. We use these eigenvalues to form the diagonal matrix D, where we place the eigenvalues along the main diagonal and the other entries are zero. And now we find corresponding eigenvectors that will form the columns of matrix P. Let's begin with lambda sub one equals two. To find an eigenvector, we solve the equation, the difference of matrix A in the product of lambda in the identity matrix times vector X equals a zero vector, which I've already set up below. Next, let's write the corresponding matrix equation, where we have the coefficient matrix times the vector X is the vector X one, X two, equals a zero vector, which is the vector zero, zero. Let's check this coefficient matrix. The first entry in row one is four minus two times one, which is two. The second entry remains one. In the second row, the first entry remains negative two. And the second entry in row two is one minus two times one, which is negative one. Next, we write the augmented matrix and write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Notice how there is no pivot in column two, which indicates x2 is a free variable. The first row indicates x1 plus one half x2 equals zero. Solving for x1, we have x1 equals negative one half x2, x2 equals x2. To parameterize the solution, let's let x2 equal t. All the eigenvectors are in the form of the vector negative one half t t or we could say t times the vector negative one half one, which indicates the eigenvectors are all the scalar multiples of the vector negative one half one, except t can't equal zero because a zero vector can't be an eigenvector. So we can use any scalar multiple as a vector corresponding to lambda equals two. To avoid fractions, let's let t equal two and use the vector negative one two for the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals two, which means we can let the first column of matrix P be negative one, two. Because we can use any scalar multiple of the vector negative one half one as the vector corresponding to lambda equals two, matrix P is not unique. And now let's find an eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub two equals three. We go through the same process, set up an augmented matrix, write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, and we get x one equals negative x two. Again, x two is a free variable, x two equals x two. Parameterizing the solution, let's let x two equal s. All the eigenvectors are in the form of the vector negative s, s, or s times the vector negative one, one, indicating the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub two equals three are all the scalar multiples of the vector negative one, one, except the zero vector. Let's just go ahead and let s equal one and use the eigenvector negative one, one for the eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub two equals three which means the second column of matrix P is negative one, one. So the last step to finish the diagonalization is to find the inverse of matrix P using the formula for the inverse of a two by two invisible matrix. We have P inverse equals one, one, negative two, negative one. You may want to pause the video if you need to review this. So now that we have P inverse, we know the diagonalization of matrix A or matrix A is equal to matrix P times matrix D times the inverse of matrix P. From here, A to the power of 33 is equal to matrix P times matrix D raised to the 33rd power 
times the inverse of matrix P. Because matrix D is a diagonal matrix, to determine D to the power of 33, we raise the entries along the main diagonal to the 33rd power. And now to find A to the power of 33, we need to find the product of these three matrices. And again, we don't want to convert to scientific notation. We're told to leave the elements or entries as expressions. Let's multiply this out on the next slide. So multiplying the first two matrices, in row one, column one of the product, we have negative one times two to the 33rd plus negative one times zero. In row one, column two, we have negative one times zero plus negative one times three to the 33rd. In row two, column one, we have two times two to the power of 33 plus one times zero. In row two, column two, we have two times zero plus one times three to the 33rd. And now let's simplify these expressions as much as possible. Of course, we can drop the products that are zero. So in row one, column one, we have negative one times two to the power of 33. In row one, column two, we have negative one times three to the 33rd. In row two, column one, we have two times two to the 33rd, which is two to the 34th. In row two, column two, we just have three to the power of 33. And now we need to find the last product. In row one, column one, we have negative one times two to the 33rd times one, plus negative one times three to the 33rd times negative two. In row one, column two, we have negative one times two to the 33rd times one, plus negative one times three to the 33rd times negative one. In row two, column one, we have two to the 34th times one, plus three to the 33rd times negative two. And in row two, column two, we have two to the 34th times one, plus three to the 33rd times negative one. And again, let's simplify as much as we can. In row one, column one, we have negative one times two to the 33rd, plus two times three to the 33rd. In row one, column two, we have negative one times two to the 33rd plus three to the 33rd. In row two, column one, we have two to the 34th plus negative two times three to the 33rd. And finally, in row two, column two, we have two to the 34th plus negative one times three to the 33rd. And now we have found matrix A raised to the power of 33 using the diagonalization of matrix A. I hope you found this helpful.